with relief, he fixed his eyes on some symbols penciled on the wall inside. The letter H. The letter H. And under it, a row of figures lined against dates as in a cash book. And then the letters DD, and under them, more figures. It's my score in cockroaches, old man. Yesterday was an average day, four. My record's nine. Makes you welcome, the little brutes. What does DD stand for? Down the drain, old man. <laughs> when I knock them into the wash basin, they go down the waste pipe. It wouldn't be fair to count them as dead, would it? That's called down the drain. No, I guess it wouldn't. And it wouldn't do to cheat yourself either. You'd lose interest at once. The only thing is, it gets dull sometimes playing against yourself. Why couldn't we make a match of it, old man? How about it? You know, it takes skill, you know, to catch cockroaches. They positively hear you coming. And the more, listen, they move like greased lightning. <laughs> I do a stock every evening with a torch. I go out, I go after them. I wouldn't mind having to try, but I, I, I've got to be off now. I, I'll tell you what, I won't start hunting until you come back from Talitz. We'll have five minutes before bed, just five minutes. We'll, we'll hunt for five minutes. We'll put, put some dough on the side. Oh, if you like. I'll come down with you, old man. I could smell the curry, you know? I, I could have laughed when the old fool mixed you up with this new police officer. <laughs> he got most of it wrong, didn't he? Wilson said. I mean, the poetry. Well, the light was still on in Harris's room when Wilson returned to the hotel. He was tired and worried. And he, he tried to tiptoe by, but, but Harris heard him. Hey, I've been, I've been waiting for you. I've been listening for you, old man, he said, waving an electric torch. He wore his mosquito boots outside his pajamas, and he looked like a harassed air raid warden. Yeah, it's late. I thought you'd be asleep. Oh, I couldn't sleep until we've had our hunt. Come on. The idea is growing on me, old man. We might have a monthly prize. I can see the time coming when other people want to join in all around. They'll all want to get in on it. Wilson said with irony, well, yeah, there might be a silver cup. Hey, it's a good idea. Stranger things have happened, old man. Yeah, we can call it the Cockroach Championship. Well, he led the way, walking softly on the boards to the middle of his room. The iron bed stood under its graying net. The armchair with collapsible back, the dressing table littered with old picture posts. It shocked Wilson once again to realize that a room could be a degree more cheerless than his own. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll, we'll draw our rooms Alternate nights, old man. Well, what weapon should I use? Uh, you can borrow one of my slippers. A board squeaked under Wilson's feet, and Harris turned warning me. Shh, shh, shh. Don't squeak the floor. They have ears like rats, he said. Gee, I'm a bit tired. Don't you think that tonight... Just come on, just five minutes, old man. I, I couldn't sleep without a cockroach hunt. Look, there's one over the dressing table. Look at him. You can have the first shot. But as the shadow of the slipper fell on the plaster wall, the insect shot away like a shadow. Zap. No use going out like that at it, old man. I can tell you're not, you're, you're, you're new at it. You're a rookie. Watch me. Harris stalked his prey. The cockroach was halfway up the wall. And Harris, as he moved on tiptoe across the creaking floor, began to weave the light of his torch backwards and forwards over the cockroach. Then, suddenly, suddenly, bam! He struck. One up, he said. One up. You have to mesmerize him. You gotta mesmerize him. To and fro across the room, they padded, weaving their lights, smashing down their shoes, occasionally losing their heads and pursuing wildly into corners. The lust of the hunt. The lust of the hunt touched Wilson's imagination. At first, their manner to each other was sporting. They would call out things like, good shot, or a hard luck, old man. But once they met together against the wainscot over the same cockroach, when they were both after the same roach, when the score was even, their tempers became frayed. No point in going after the same bird, old man, Harris said. I started him. You lost your one, old man. This was mine. It was the same. He did a double turn. It was the same roach. Oh, no. Anyway, there's no reason why you shouldn't go for the same one. You drove it towards me. Bad play on your part. You just drove it over at me. It was mine. That's not allowed in the rules, Harris said shortly. Perhaps not in your rules, buddy. Damn it all. 
Harris said. I invented a game. A cockroach sat upon the brown cake of soap in the wash basin. A cockroach just sat there and watched them. Wilson spied it. He paused for a moment and took a long shot with the shoe from six feet away. The shoe landed smartly on the soap and the cockroach spun down into the basin. Harris rushed over, turned on the tap, and washed it down. Good shot, old man, he said. Good shot. That is one DD. One DD. DD be damned, Wilson said. It was dead when you turned on that tap. That's not a DD. That was a certain. I got him. He was dead when he went into the sink. Oh, you can't be sure of that. It might have just been un unconscious, concussion. It's DD according to the rules. It's DD. Your damn rules again. I'm sorry, old man. My rules are Queensbury rules in this town. They won't be for long. Wilson threatened. He slammed the door hard behind him, and the walls of his own room vibrated round him from the shock. His heart beat with rage, and the hot night, the sweat drained from his armpits. But as he stood there beside his own bed, seeing the replica of Harris's room around him, the wash basin, the table, the gray mosquito net, even the cockroach fastened on the wall, anger trickled out of him. And loneliness took its place. It was like quarreling with one's own image in the glass. I was crazy, he thought. What made me fly out like that? I've lost a friend. And he watched the cockroach slowly crawl out into the night. That night, it took him a long while to sleep. And when he slept, at last he dreamed that he had committed a crime, so that he woke with the sense of guilt still heavy upon him. On his way down to breakfast, he paused beside Harris's door. There was no sound. He knocked lightly, but there was no answer. He opened the door a little way, and he saw obscurely through the gray net Harris's damp bed. He crept up to it and asked softly, Are you awake? What, what, what is it, old man? What? I'm sorry, Harris, about last night. Oh, it's, it's my fault, old man. I had a touch of fever. I was, I was sickened with the fever, a little touchy, you know? No, it's my fault. You were quite right. It was a DD. Well, we'll toss for it, old man. Okay, I'll come in tonight. I'll get you. I'll beat you tonight. Fair. Well, that's fine. I'll get dressed. I'll see you at breakfast. <laughs> 